going to be she's going to be here 10 after so. all right hearing no adjustments we don't need a timekeeper um approved minutes of monday june 28th is a full board meeting I have a motion. Can you guys hear me? What do I have something to say? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Any discussion on the June 28th minute? All right, hearing none, so moved. Um, approve the minutes of August 9th. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve the minutes of August 9th. Uh, I'll second. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Andrew. Um, any discussion on those? All right, hearing none. So move, they're approved. Um, board correspondence communications. I did not receive anything. Hmm. Anybody receive anything? Any type of correspondence or anything? Okay. Public comments? Marty. Marty, do you have any public comments tonight? No, no comment. I'm just grateful that that I can join you. All right, thank you. All right, reports. Uh, Jamie. Um, so yeah, I might report in hand. I think I highlighted all the, the major details. Uh, we do have a COVID-19 update under discussion item, so I can give you some updates there. Um, I was at new teachers uh, orientation today and the energy there was uh, really positive. And uh, I said it in my, um, I said it in my report, but I just am really uh, happy to have Onda and Annette joining the team. Um, and this is just, this is a really solid crew, Ray, Tara, on and on that. And it's, uh, it's been a ton of fun, uh, working together these two months. So, um, I'll take any other questions folks have. And I'm a horse because I was at a Red Sox game Saturday <laughs> and they lost 10 to one. If you were wondering, I feel quite well, um, other than my pride was hurt at that game Saturday evening. <laughs> All right, anything for Jamie? All right, I guess you're good, Jamie. Chief Academic Officer. Hi, thank you. Uh, you also have my report as, as well, so I'm uh, happy to take any questions on on that there we will, I think we've got time on the agenda later uh, for the, um, the state assessment results so we can talk uh, about that there but the um and the main goal here is to make sure that uh you know we're communicating with you around the uh the data that we have so there's also a, a proposed data calendar for uh reports uh back to the board um that is included in, in there as well um we launched our um data inquiry professional learning last Thursday with members from all of our schools and the central office. Um, and so that was a great way to start, um, kind of start the school year with that whole group. And uh, as um, as Jamie mentioned, we had new teachers uh, around this morning and I was just going through all their feedback and they are super excited to start getting into their classrooms. They uh, really like the colleagues that they got to meet today um, and they feel are feeling very supportive by their mentors. So we will continue to work on um, bolstering that program to ensure that they feel supported uh, ongoing throughout the year. Any questions, anyone? We have a really quiet group tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Director of Special Services. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Um, so yes, we've, we've had a busy couple of months, but it's flown by really quickly, I feel, and we've done a lot of great work. Um, you also have my report. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'll take those. Um, but just know, yeah, we've been working really hard um, <laughs> trying to hire people and um, interviewing people. Um, and so we're just we're just doing what 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 we can 
um, with the applicants that we're receiving. So nice. Yeah. Uh, any questions, guys? Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Um, so I was just looking at the alternate classroom description. Um, in the past, we've had like right now we're kind of starting that at grades three to five and then six to eight nine to twelve um we had had a k to two class as well right prior to this so just wondering what the thinking was with closing that alternative classroom down and what the plan is with those kids sure I, I think I'm probably best to answer that, Andrew. That was part of what Don had presented as part of the budget discussion. When we looked at budget for 9 through 12, we didn't add those funds for 9 through 12. Uh, we reinvested. So we took the staffing that we had at grades K through 2, and we were able to use those funds to staff 9 through 12. So as far as K through 2 goes, the focus is on providing as intensive supports as needed to support students in the school setting. And one of the things that we were really concerned about is, is that the academic achievement that we were realizing from students in the K through two program was not setting them up for success to reintegrate back in uh, to universal instruction. So also what I would say is that classroom only had four students last year and two of them were gonna be leaving. Uh, and they're being served in the three through five. So it just made sense to reinvest. I think that our system in general is strengthening to best support kids at the primary grades um, as we strengthen our you know, PBIS program, our behavioral support, school-based clinicians, things of that nature. So we felt like the investment in the nine through 12 made a great deal of sense. And Annette's working hard with her team to look to get our students back who have been tuition uh, primarily to EVA um, and also to some schools down in the Hartford district. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I just, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense, thanks. All right, any other questions? Hi, Stacey. Sorry, I'm running late. I have a doze to milk. <laughs> We're on to the business manager's report, Stacey. So I was Thanks, not Maddie. here last week. I was on vacation, so you didn't have a written report for me. So mine's pretty brief tonight anyways. Our focus right now is getting everything uploaded for the FY21 fiscal year end audit. That's all due up to the auditor's portal on Thursday. Then we have a meeting with our auditor on Friday to go over stuff and solidify our plans for the actual FY21 audit. This week is the first payroll for all of our new hires. So we're scrambling to make sure everybody's paperwork is in and that they're set up appropriately in the paycheck system. And then we're also working through, I have Chris Locarno coming in tomorrow afternoon to review all of my final year end reports for all the audits because that was new for me this year. That was previously handled, as you may recall, um, by Jane and Cynthia. So I wanna make sure I have everything documented appropriately. So that's also part of what is the final steps of the FY21. And then lastly, uh, board stipends will be paid September 10th. So if you have not done payroll work, paperwork with us, you need to reach out to Lisa Blair to get your paperwork done so that you can get paid on the September 10th payroll run. And I'll make that in all of my board reports and I'll send out an email to each of the boards letting them know that as well. Cause I know you've got many new members on your boards this year. So that's my report. Any questions? I see Don has his hand raised. Yes. Yeah. What's the time frame where we can expect the results of these audits this year? The original goal was to have them by December. So I'll, if everything stays on track with the auditors, they're supposed to be here in September. So that's still my understanding. I'll know more after Friday. Okay. Any other questions of Tara? All right, Tara. 
Um, policy committee. Can I go? Oh, oh. I'm sorry, I skipped you. No, it's okay. I'd rather not. But... <laughs> I'm sorry, Ray. <laughs> Apparently, I'm checking things off. I'm not asking tonight. <laughs> you also have my report. Uh, pleasure to be working with our new folks. Uh, new teacher orientation went well today. Uh, the data worked last Thursday. Admin retreat tomorrow. So all sorts of things going on. My department helping serve the three right down the line. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, any questions? Yes, Ray. It mentions in your report a difference between a student's uh, computer and a teacher's computer. What is that difference? Difference between a student and a teacher computer. Sorry, Don, let me get to it. It's been a couple of days since I've read it. So um, basically size, right? devices we buy for students tend to be 11 inch devices. And employees, they're 14 inches in size, the component. Okay, so what size do the boards get? <laughs> well, we don't, we don't, that never actually happened last year. We should talk about it again. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, I think we talked about it and the board didn't want to take up on it, but I'm happy to discuss it again. I think what we had board. said was that if- I, Well, if I know that- I know that Sharon board has computers issued by the school, some of us. So I didn't know if we had a teacher or a student computer. You would have what I call a student device, Don. Okay. All right, any other questions of Ray? Okay. Policy committee. We had our meeting last Thursday. We did two and a half hours of public comment. We have another meeting coming up to discuss that public comment on Thursday. Thursday, this week. Yeah, Thursday at six in Karen. Um, and that's what I have for a update on policy committee. Is so there something else anybody wants to add? Yeah, I, I just had an obs a question regarding um, employees of the of the of the White River Supervisory Union testifying in these things. Is that okay? Can board members testify as well? Are you inquiring about a principal who spoke? I am. Well, I, I believe that that was a representation of being a community member of Sharon. Then he shouldn't have, um, shouldn't have actively said that his position was with the White River Valley, if that's the case. I mean, I think it's important to get as much feedback as we can on the policy. Um, it was, seemed like it was along the same lines as many other people commenting. And I think the board has laid their opinion into the because we created the policy. And certainly we've allowed teachers of the organization to speak at public comment in the past, Don. I, I was just asking if that's going to be allowed of board members as well in, in the public forum like that. So that's fine. So I'm assuming it's going to be okay if that's the case. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Stacy? Oh, I lowered my hand. Looks oh, okay. like Aaron was up. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, if you could give an update about the timeline for moving forward, um, specifically with the anti-racism policy. Well, I think that's what we're going to discuss on Thursday, the timeline. Oh. And, you know, there was lots of public comment. and We listened to that, and we didn't even discuss further after that, Aaron. So I think... When we reconvene, we're going to talk about where we go from that point with, with that policy. And that's really the okay. only policy we've been working on. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Marcy? Yeah, thank oh, you. I, I just wanted, I wanted... Marcy, Marcy, I'm yeah. sorry. Can I give you a public comment? Yeah, of course. This is comments from the board. I'm sorry. Of course. Thanks. Don? Thank you. Um, I just, 
I'm still confused about how we got to this position where we are with, with the anti-racist um, policy. We started out with an equity policy and, and that's what we asked for. And now we're accepting something different. So I'm just trying to figure out um, Policy Committee um, back in December took a vote or a straw poll and directed me to stay with that title. I asked your group that twice and twice the answer was that you wanted it to be titled anti-racism. And Stacy, you've been taking notes. I think you could speak to that. Yeah, I think we, we brought this up a couple of times, especially after the first draft of the policy. And at that vote in December, it had come up that we wanted to keep the anti-racism policy. And once we were done with that, add a more broad DEI and inclusion policy that would speak to other inclusivity efforts. I can send you the notes from that meeting, Don, if you want to have a look. Please. Sure. Um, I would I just, just add. Yeah. I just think it's a much different product than what we originally had had asked for, and that's all. And there was a lot. There was a strong, strong opinion at that last policy meeting that this is what a problem that we had identified. And I'm not sure that we had identified it. It came to us through the natural matriculation of the development of the existing policy. So I'm not sure that we identified the need of it, frankly. Did we? I mean, I think we yeah. identified a need for it, which is why it had come up, but. Um... We had, who had, who had identified? I thought it was identified by the folks that we asked to come in and help develop the policy. They're the ones that brought this flavor forward, I think. I'll check. I'll, I'll look back in my minutes, but my understanding was this was always an anti-racism policy and that that was in fact their work. Um, you know, I- No, it did start, so- It did start as equity. It did start as equity. Yeah. There was two community forums. We got a first draft. I think the first draft maybe even was titled equity. I'd have to look, Don. Yeah. And then there was discussion, I believe around December from the policy committee and one of the feedback was, to change the title. And so that's where the title got changed. And I do know that I certainly asked that question a few times because originally it didn't come off as a greater umbrella. And I'll continue to ask the question, I guess, because I don't think we're getting what we asked for. Frankly. Yeah, I mean, we, we called this an anti-racism equity policy in October. So we called it anti-racist equity policy. Who, who called it that? The, the that policy was what committee? it was called, the policy, the policy committee on October 26th. Or, or, that, or that subcommittee that sent the policy back to them. No, I mean, that's, the, the, it, that's on the policy committee. That's on the policy committee agenda from October 26th of last year. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would say that, you know, Don, that's, this is the work of the policy committee Thursday. I think... I'd encourage board members to attend that meeting because this is your policy. It's the board's. It's not a subcommittee. At it's not point. consultants. I think at this, I mean, the, the last two drafts have been feedback directly from board members. When, when I, one of the things that I need, I need to stress is policy is a legal obligation. This is almost like a, procedure that we're trying to develop rather than policy. Policy is more, more broad, more global, and then procedure drills down for the specific locations. I'm just, I just want to make sure that we're covered. This, so, it's, uh, Don, this is, this is Ray. I, I, I asked that question my, myself because um, I came to the policy committee in fall of 19 with a procedure. Yeah. Was told, uh, not to have brought it. Uh, but I believe that the entire point in this policy was to have everything outlined in advance so that there was no uh, time waiting for the development of a procedure. 
Right. Marcy, uh, Ray's talking about a different policy related to technology. Um, so the policy itself is not, I mean, you're right, Don, there's a lot of procedure there, but it is defined as procedure. So the thought process was it shouldn't be in procedures in policy. Form with the policy. Yeah. It's not, it says procedure. It, 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 right, you but a it policy shouldn't document, And then with the policy document is procedures. If the board doesn't want to look at the review of the procedures, that's fine. But it would be my practice to want to have you guys vet those when we adopt policy. Right. D does Dina have an opinion on this? I assume that she's. Dina reviewed it, this clearly. on draft three and gave you the okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll try to be there Wednesday. I'll Thursday. The same Thursday. Thursday. Um, Thursday. Just as a quick, just as a quick recap, um, I took a bunch of notes, um, and Glenn took a bunch of notes, and we compared after and came to the same conclusion, which was that of the people who spoke, about seventy-five percent of them spoke out in favor of it. About nine percent of them spoke out against it, and the other, um, the others didn't express a strong preference either way. Um, so that was kind of our our informal tally based on comments. I think that, so Stacey, I would say that I, I've, I'm aware of who was there spoke out in favor of it, but I do think that there were some good suggestions that are worthy of being looked at that might make even more people comfortable with the policy. It would certainly make me in a much better place. So I think we need to discuss that and look at that on Thursday. Um, but yeah, I think overwhelmingly people are in support of having a policy. It's just how, you know, how do we get it to a point where we all feel good about it? And that's part of working together and being on a committee. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is such a divisive issue for reasons that I don't quite understand that we're never going to get it to a place where everyone's going to love it. Um, and I think that's just the truth of it. Who are, who are the members of the, or the standing members of the policy committee currently? It's uh, Ethan Bowen from Rochester Stockbridge, uh, Stacy uh, for Granville Hancock, uh, uh, for Rudd, it's been um, Lisa Floyd, and for F but it's Kathy, Don, it was you, now it's Chantel, mm -hmm. and for Stratford, it's Glenn. Okay, so those folks, everybody seemed to have been there last, last meeting, so... Good. There's been pretty good Lisa's attendance, not gonna, I think. Be, oh, Lisa's Lisa. not going to be able to it be there Lisa Thursday, Floyd and Chris or I will be there. I, yeah. Right. But Chris or I will, we're there this on Monday and we'll be there on Thursday. Um, so we'll have representation from our district. Nice. Thank you. All right. Anything else on the policy committee? All right, negotiations committee. Um, we are working on ratifying at this point. Yeah, we, we reached a tentative agreement. Uh, I put that in my report. Uh, we're waiting for the support staff to ratify. I believe that they're hoping to do that during in-service. Once they do that, I will get the document out to the full board. Um, and then we should look to pull together a wagon wheel meeting I, I would be great for the full board to get a good attendance of quorums. We'll go over it, um, the, go over the document, answer questions, and then we would look to ratify as a full board and then do our breakout sessions. I think that keeps it clean. Um, and we're certainly much farther along with technology than we were the last time we tried to do that. Drop out, uh, breakout sessions are easier, but I would look to warn that in Bethel as the location and i do think it would be helpful if people are willing to come so that we can answer questions okay have we received any indication from the teacher's side when they'd like to start 
I have not. Do we have a date when they should be getting touch, in touch with us? Yeah, by the end of October, I believe. Oh, a couple months. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Superintendent Evaluation Committee. Um, we need to set up a meeting for that. I'm not sure. I think Chantel's on that committee for you, Don. Um, Aaron, you're on that committee, correct? So would it be helpful if I um, email out some, and Stacy, you are too, correct? The particular night we want to try to shoot for, is there a particular night that's, well, it's a committee meeting. Uh, well, it's a committee meeting. Uh, Thursdays are safer right now because we're not in negotiations, although policy has been using them. Uh, Ray can put up the calendar. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays are tough depending on the week. So maybe we want to shoot for Thursdays once we get through the policy committee. I don't want to schedule it now and then we need to have another policy committee meeting next Thursday. Does that work for everyone? Looks like Mondays are actually open now. We used to have more stuff on Mondays. Or Mondays. So Mondays look other than the first, the fourth. Do you guys want me to put out a poll? Yes, Aaron? please. Yes. That please. would be great. All right, I'll put out a poll with a couple of nights and we'll try to get one going and then we'll charge on from there. Okay. Um, uh, discussion items, right? White River Valley SU response and approach to COVID-19 for September 2nd. Um, so I put out uh, guidance around us beginning the year masking. Um, I know that, uh, again, this is not a popular topic either way. Um, I received feedback that folks were happy that we put that guidance out. Um, I had a few folks that had questions about when, how would we determine the threshold and things of that nature um, around 80%. And uh, we will be working with um, the state of Vermont, who is hopefully going to assist us with identifying uh, those in our, our buildings that have been vaccinated. That's still to come, that information about how they're going to do that. What I will tell you is, is that I received about 13 questions last week that I spent the time answering today and have now shared off to our COVID coordinator uh, to make certain that the information I'm providing is accurate and in alignment to uh, meetings he's been having with our SU nurses and the guidance we've received. That document will go out tomorrow to answer folks' questions. And then I've drafted um, another document that will go up later this week that just gives more specifics to folks around like, even though we're not requiring health screening, what does it mean you should be doing at home? What happens if your child does show um, symptoms of COVID-19? What's gonna be the school's response? Um, things, uh, and the response is gonna be, just so you know, for an example with that, it's, it's based on information we used last year. If you show symptoms past 24 hours, we ask that you check in with your pediatrician um, and that you get clearance from them. And they would recommend whether you needed testing or not. Um, I just use that as an example to give more specific guidance for folks. Uh, it gives guidance around encouraging um, social distancing in our cafeterias. We are gonna permit, permit visitors still in the buildings masked but it's gonna require principal um, approval prior to it occurring. Um, and so a bunch of those types of details are forthcoming. And um, I think it's gonna help folks uh, be more at ease uh, around us reopening September 2nd. I do know folks' anxiety levels are increasing again. Um, and uh, and make certain that we can keep our schools open safely. The, the one thing that's still, um, a struggle for us is that when we had positivity within our schools, we hit the pause button and went remote for three days while we did contact tracing and quarantined. If we do that now, I cannot count that as a student day. So I am gonna need to meet with our SU nurses and our, our response team to talk about if we have a positivity, what exactly our procedure is gonna look like. Um, and so I want those folks to weigh in on that. And also our person from the Department of Health who's help, gonna help give us guidance. It's probably gonna look more like we quarantine 
those that are identified as being at risk of being close contacts, they would go remote and they, we would teach them virtually. As long as we have attendance in the building of 51% or greater, we can count it as a student day. Um, so that, that process is gonna look a bit different. Don? Uh, thank you. So from that statement, Jamie, does that mean that any time that we go remote, we can't use it as a student attendance day? That's correct, yeah. Wow. Be ready okay. to be in school through July next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Don, when the state of emergency was lifted, the secretary's ability to provide that type of forthcoming guidance went away. Okay. And so now we fall back on the old statute guidance around 51%. So even storm days, we're not going to be able to, to That's cover. correct. Okay. And they made that clear once again in bold. Yep. Wow. Okay. Okay. Can't hear you, Ethan. Ethan, we can't hear you. Still can't hear you. Volume up. Yeah. <laughs> we like still see a Ethan. mute on, Ethan. Drop out and come right back. All right. Thank you, Stacy. Stacy, you yeah. want to go over with Ethan? Sure. Jamie, you've probably read the letter from Bridget Nice last Thursday or Friday. Um, for those of you who haven't, she said the superintendents have been receiving death threats and that there are plans to storm the schools in Harwood um, as a response to her policy um, to mandate vaccinations for staff and masking for everybody. Jamie, I just wanted to know if you've gotten any word in our district about that, anything like that. Yeah, I got to say, uh, our folks are uh, really great to work with. And what I wanted to add was, uh, I think the example was the two and a half hours of public comment that we had on the policy was so respectful um, last week. And I find that that's just how we conduct ourselves is in that in that manner. So no, folks have asked me questions, um, but I, and they've tried to understand, but I gotta say um, the decisions we made so far have been at least in my level strongly supported based on the information I'm getting. And I think for those folks who are frustrated, um, I think they're trying to understand, they've asked good questions. And I do think um, in general, we're, we, we've been, you have been working hard. I think we continue to work hard on just creating a, a climate and culture where we don't have to agree, but we're gonna treat each other with respect. Um, and I gotta say that that's what I have found. So no, I have not had any of those types of uh, incidences. That's good news. Do you wanna try again? Ethan? Hey, can you can you there hear you me? Are. Now? Okay. Hi, Ethan. Yep. Um, hello. Uh, I have no idea what I was going to ask, so uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Ethan, it's good to hear your voice, though, sir. Yes, welcome yeah, back. Very, very good vacation with none of this. So it's all a big uh, education. <laughs> with what? With, with none, none of this. this. Uh, none <laughs> of this. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Not even cell phone, hardly. So anyway. Oh, nice. Thank you. Don? So, Jamie, just to follow up, does that also mean that the um, off-site schools, the school setting, if someone chooses not to attend in, in school settings, is that going to be allowed? No, uh, unless they register for VTBLC, but no, uh, we are all back in person. Okay, all right, good to know. Uh, this is just catching up. I heard someone say something that at the last, was there a board meeting where we somehow, the board gave Jamie you approval to make policy and that we didn't have to vote a on policy it? to continue uh, to make operational decisions. Operational decisions. Like so I last choose year. my words. Yeah. Choose my words carefully. Um, 
uh, operational decisions regarding COVID. Was it specific to that? Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I fully support that. I just wanted to know if that that actually was true or not. Something I just heard. Thank you. Mm. All right. Anything else about the COVID? Okay. Um, Martyr Balanced Assessment Consortium, Spring 2021 results. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mouthful. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Why, why SBAC has become a very popular acronym. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to learn that one now. <laughs> uh, we did, as part of our uh, new teacher orientation this morning, did a round of alphabet soup, which was going through 25, 26 of our most common uh, acronyms to see how many of them folks knew. And it's SBAC was one of them. Trainings as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, feedback that from one person, it was the most helpful thing they'd done. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, you, um, everyone has received the report of the uh, SU level results from the state summative assessment um, from spring of 2021. Uh, I think as most of you or all you know, we did not have state, uh, state assessments in the spring of 2020. Um, so that means a couple of things. One, and we've gone through a lot of, <laughs> we've gone through a lot in the last uh, year and a half. So one thing that means is that we sort of have a new baseline because it sort of disrupts any sort of longitudinal data that we had um, for assessment. So this is a, you know, it is a good opportunity to think of this as a baseline from which we will, mark, re, you know, start to mark growth and um, in progress over years. It also means in particular that both our third and fourth graders, um, this was their first time taking these these types of assessments. And usually, you know, usually that's third graders, but our fourth graders um, this year did not, didn't have that experience last year. So it was all brand new for a greater number of students than, than on a typical year. Uh, in the report, you can see just the, the presentation of the data um, in sort of three ways. The first two are, are fairly similar, but um, looking at the um, how many students have met uh, expectations um, and, and how many students, you know, and how many students are either not yet there or, or further below. And so the the state um, uses four levels. Um, so that's what's in the first in the first graphic for each of the three um, each of the three assessment content areas. Um, also, just for ease of kind of just looking at it, also collapse those into sort of the two broader groups of those who are meeting or exceeding expectations and those who are not yet meeting. And that's in the second graph for each of the the content areas. And then the third one is looking at scaled scores. And this is one I, um, I believe that you all have looked at a little bit, but it's probably a, a little bit newer and not quite as, um, as intuitive perhaps uh, initially, but this is, a, um, this is a, a great way to look at um, growth across all of the years as well as in, um, all the grades and will also help with some of our longitudinal looking as we move forward because uh, it puts every, um, every assessment on the same scale. So you can see that on average, there's about a 30 point growth uh, in, in, in score from grade level to grade level. And so, uh, you know, a student that's making kind of uh, regular growth progress, you know, would be making, you know, perhaps 30, 30 points. And so when you kind of fall below that, um, you know, that you haven't made a growth for students that maybe are below that, we want to look at accelerating that growth to maybe make more than 30 points in a year. Um, but it gives us an idea. And um, it's not quite uh, because we have, um, smaller schools and smaller grade levels, those can get really affected by percentages. So when you only have six kids in a grade, um, each of those are, you know, more than 10%. 10, 10 so we, we see a lot more movement when, you know, a kid shifts from one group to another. And so scaled score, average scaled scores um, will hold a little bit more stable. And so it gives us a better idea of actually how our kids are doing rather than these sort of rapid shifts that aren't really representative of, you know, um, in just one student moving. Um, perhaps, you know, from not yet meeting proficiency to, to meeting proficiency. Um, so you have the results from across uh, reading, math, and science. What I said in the report is I think you'll see that in, in science, I mean, in, in reading, you can tell that the, that's the most consistent across all of, um, all of our grade levels. I know there's been an, a lot of investment of time and resources in, in literacy um, over the last couple of years. And I think, you know, that that kind of stability across our grade levels is, uh, and the, high, you know, in the higher levels there is, can be, somewhat connected to that. We still wanna see all those levels go higher, but um, I think that is, uh, is, rep, you know, is, a, is a result of all of that increased focus. So as we, sh um, as we roll math and increase focus in math over, um, this year, we hope to see those scores respond as well to that 
um, as well as uh, science, um, you know, following that. Happy to take any uh, any questions. Anda, if I might, um, I'm curious, um, and I could probably find this information myself, but I'm lazy. Um, how our um, trajectory compares to other supervisory unions around um, around. I mean, I'm generally curious about where we stand in the state, but I'm just wondering if that growth pattern is similar elsewhere or if we're seeing um, a marked bump, if you happen it to know. It is not released yet. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, not? Uh, no. <laughs> I was wondering, because I, as part of my day job, I usually put those graphics together for Digger, and so I'm, I thought I was behind the mark, but apparently no, no, the a, I might the be behind the mark. not released it also... yet. Okay, good. And I, I'm not even certain that they're going to release it. Yeah. You're not Due certain that SBAC is, yeah, okay. I mean, it might be because with class sizes smaller, they might not be able to aggregate the data in the same way they usually do. Okay. It's certainly data that we should be watching uh, in, in regards to trends, right? Um, and I specifically right. think growth trends, not in comparison of, but just growth trends. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is that they adjust those scale scores every year based on where everybody is at. And I, I could be wrong about that. It's kind of difficult for me to understand. But so I would well, like to see- Well, they adjust the, um, they adjust if you look um, in regards to what they consider to be an accuracy within the scale score of plus right. or minus, right. those would get larger or smaller. Um, they okay. try, though, to have the thresholds somewhat stay in place um, because of their looking at cohort growth of at least 30 scale points. But as far as what's proficient, that can change within that mar margin of error. Right. I see. That makes more sense. That You just made a lot more sense than they ever have at explaining that. <laughs> nice job. Thanks for that. Well, thanks, Stacey. Sure, Jamie, anytime. Okay, so I'll ask that again if I don't see the data next month. Aaron, I'm, um, Andrew, I'm sorry. Do you do any sort of adjustments based on, like, presumably the K to five would be basically all the students in all the schools, but starting in sixth grade or I guess seventh grade, we have kind of a subset of students that go to a different SU or different schools, and same thing with high school. So is there any adjustment to take that into account when we look at these scaled scores um, differences? Yeah, like I mean, for students testing in our buildings, you, you can tell them that. Yeah. 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 So these these scores are just folks that, that, that just kids that are, are enrolled in our schools and, and in our buildings, not um, not folks that are, are enrolled in other schools. Right. So I, I, I'm curious if that would have an effect, like if you know, the top kids wind up going to a different school, then that would affect our scale score comparatively to our average scale score, you know, as we get the different cohort of kids in the different grades. Well, I think that we should watch it as an SU, as a, a cohort up through sixth grade. And then I, again, I think the d district cohorts will make more sense at that level, Andrew as yep. compared to the SBI, I see what you're saying. Our, our demographics after sixth train, grade do change. So if we were watching a, a cohort from kindergarten up through six, absolutely when we look at seven, that's gonna change. And then change again after eight, because um, we're gonna have more students leave. So in your local districts, that information will be um, valuable right up through to the grade that you you stop operating, but as an SU, that is gonna create some discrepancy. Uh, I can That's also a, look at the email. Sorry. I, I wonder if it would be possible to look at the data as just the subset of, well, I guess it's not really possible. <laughs> we need kind of basically like the history data for everybody to see 
how an individual student. We should have that in years to come. <laughs> uh, we can, I can also include um, the number of students that we are talking about at each grade level, which would just give you an idea of where these numbers um, do sort of mm -hmm. um, jump down. Um, but they're, I mean, they're exactly where you say, and, you know, particularly when we look at our ninth grade, that is a, that's a, you know, it's a fair, it's a really small group. So, um, going forward, I could include that, what, you know, the end, uh, the student population for each grade level, just so you, we know what we're sort of talking about in terms of numbers, and it might help just tell a little bit more of the story. I think that's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, having, because otherwise you think of it as a solid group all the way through, as we've just been talking about, and that's not the case. Um, we've talked about this at our, um, our district level, the idea of following up on our students who are going to other schools. Um, do we have any access or can we at least request? I mean, I know it's a lot. It's a lot of people. Uh, but is there um, to know if how students are doing once they leave our school, our, our supervisory union? Yeah, I would love to get them a way to get some qualitative and quantitative data. Ethan mm -hmm. to ask schools to complete for us on yep. an annual basis. I think the key for me is going to be to work with those principals and or superintendents to make certain folks um, participate in that. And so I think the key is to first identify what data do we want and then reach out to those schools to see if they'll complete it. So I was, it's on a list to talk to Onda about is to work with you as a board to say what are those qualitative and quantitative measures that we want to track for our students um, who then leave us, because uh, you know, other than one district, we're all choice towns. So it's important data for us to get. John, it is very important data to have. However, historically, we've had major problems trying to mine that data from the receiving schools. They, they don't want to put the effort into the getting that for us. So I would applaud your efforts if you're able to do that. We've tried to do that for many, many years. I think the, like I said, you're right, Don. I think the only way we're going to get it is if we could convince the headmasters or superintendents in combination with the principals and curriculum coordinators why it's important. Um, and so without that partnership, right, we're going to spend time and resources not being able to get a full picture. Uh, could you use access to some of the fairs and things that, you know, the open house days or whatever, that if they want to be able to advertise to your kids, like, we'd like a little <laughs> favor. That's a bad I idea, think. Andrew. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else on that topic? All right, our next topic, are we gonna vote on this tonight or is it not a full board vote? What? Ripton. No, I think we need to do this tonight. Okay, response to requests from Ripton to join our supervisory union. The state board wants something from us by September 1. So. Okay, absolutely. So uh, Kathy and I, we're going to project it. Yeah. yeah. Ray's got a projection. Kathy and I worked on, uh, based on the June meeting, a statement based on kind of what we felt like the consensus was. Um, and what we took as a consensus was that we're flattered of uh, Ripton's approach to us, but that um, right now we weren't in a place to say, yes, please come. Um, at least that was our takeaway. From that last meeting so we worked on this for you to review and see if you want to wordsmith it or move on it uh secretary french did reach out to me in july just so you know for a one-on-one -on -one meeting i let him know that you discussed this again in june um, and that you were thinking about action in august he urged us to put some type of statement together um, he does plan on making a recommendation to the state board for Ripton. The state board doesn't have to act on his recommendation, although he felt like that was going to be strongly considered. Uh, he did have questions uh, about why, as an SU, we might want to take Ripton on. He felt like we're pretty large already. 
Um, and he had questions as well as about what would they provide in regards to resources to uh, increase the capacity out of this office. And so he had good questions, same questions we were asking ourselves, um, which to me was uh, a more assuring uh, that you know our thoughts around not right now made sense. So I'll leave it at that for you guys to discuss. Don Shaw. I don't know if you heard you, Kathy. Don. I hear you. I just thank you. I'm trying to turn my microphone off. I, I like the, the I like the paragraph. I would suggest perhaps a little rewording of the sentence after this decision is based on several factors. Is that a period or a comma after factors? It should be a comma. Okay. Well, we could leave it as a period and then just take out of which and, yeah. and, and insert, insert these include. Don, you're taking over as board proofreader. That was going to be my suggestion. That's good. And, that, and other than that, I would pass that along as it, as it stands, frankly. Yep. Me too. I feel like that's that's my memory of that discussion, well, our last discussion about it. Yeah, because we were pretty unanimous in our vote, though not completely. Um, I know there were some people who definitely didn't feel that way. Um, uh, so I'm sorry we don't have a. I guess we have represented from everybody, every individual board. Anyway. We do. And when we discussed this last, it was at a full board meeting. So we did get yep. lots of um, yep. input. So I feel pretty comfortable passing this. Yep. All right. So any other discussion on this? All right. If there's no other discussion, our next um, possible fair response to request from Ripton. Do I have a motion to accept the response? We do accept the response. Is that what you want mm -hmm. us to do? To accept the response as written? Uh, I move that the executive board accept the response as written. So moved. And could I also ask Ethan, can we direct Jamie to submit this to the secretary? Uh, yes, and submit, yes, and submit to the secretary and probably to Ripton as well, I would imagine. Yeah. Does that suffice, Jamie? Yeah, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Don. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Hearing none, so moved. Get that on letterhead and get it out tomorrow. Um. New hire, regular resignations, new hires, Jamie. Maybe. So these are all new hires. Um, we did uh, just before, um, just last week, we did receive a resignation from Tiffany Battams. Tiffany had been serving as a special education teacher uh, due to personal reasons. She's decided um, that coming back right now is not gonna be in her best interest which definitely um, was late and uh, did result now in us needed to continue to search for special education teachers. Um, and so I do want to let you know of that resignation. The, the teams worked incredibly hard uh, to find these really high quality candidates. Um, and I will tell you that the three special educators that we have moving forward to you uh, are really strong. Um, and I think they're going to serve our students across the SU really well. Um, Annette and her, her uh, interview committee did a terrific job. The other resignation we had was that Jan Crow, who is our part-time pre-K coordinator, is moving out of state and uh, to take care of a family member. And so she announced her retirement. She was retired. She worked for us part time. Um, and so she's not going to be returning. Um, and so what we did is, is um, as you know, we had the passing of Sue Barnaby 
um, which was tragic last spring. Um, Sue was, um, her position had been advertised and we were struggling to fill it. So we advertise uh, for a pre-K coordinator slash interventionist. And so um, Renee Hinton, we're really lucky to get Renee's coming to us. Mm -hmm. She was a uh, lead teacher at Orange County Child Center and then was a teacher in Head Start. Um, comes with a, a great deal of experience. Um, is gonna join our team as pre-K coordinator and interventionist. She is gonna do the pre-K intervention on the Eastern side, but pre-K coordinator across the SU. And then uh, Sue Clark, who retired as a triple E teacher, uh, was willing to come back in a part-time role uh, to be a pre-K interventionist, uh, which is great news for us. Sue's been with the organization at the Windsor Northwest for a long time. Uh, so Sue said, I would like to be reassigned <laughs> and uh, withdraw my full retirement. And so Sue is going to do pre-K intervention at uh, the Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge, and maybe some in South Royalton uh, based on need. And so I think that this is going to work out well. One of the things that I'm learning quickly is having one person uh, to try to cover this whole geographical area can be difficult. So I think looking at doing some of these positions this way when it works out, so folks aren't spending most of their day traveling, that they're able to be more focused um, in a geographical region without us having to add FTE made a great deal of sense. So um, I'm pretty excited about how that all played out and having Sue's institutional knowledge and uh, experience with the Triple E team uh, and pre-K team is gonna be great. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then the math interventionists, of course, are being funded through ESSER. So we brought them on as SU employees. It just makes it easier for us in regards to not having to subgrant out. So you see them listed as SU employees, but they are then assigned um, school locations. Uh, like Faye is going to be working at RSUD across those two districts. Uh, sorry, two buildings within that district. And Donna is gonna be working in uh, the Newton School. I think, was there some other questions? There, there was, Jamie, I had my hand raised, but I think you answered part of it. That list of people are just to fill current vacancies or are there new positions? But then you mentioned- Yeah, to fill current system. vacancies other than the two math interventionists. Right, okay. Those just... were funded for with an answer. And for many of us, we had been talking about it uh, yeah. even at budget time. So yeah, no new positions outside of that. And we Thank would you. still like to find another special educator. Um, yes. And so we continue to be on the hunt for that. How are we doing with the paras? I know there was a shortage of paras. We're, we, we're still short. Um, and we put out uh, a couple of um, hiring articles in the, the Herald and the Valley News. So I've actually um, received a couple of emails. So I'm hoping that'll start uptaking pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Um, and and, I, and I know, there was, there was an, the, just the issue of compliance. I know we, when I talked to Lindy last, um, there was the issue that if we didn't have these at the beginning of the year, there could be some compliance issues. Did we talk to the AOE and, and French about, about covering ourselves for that? Um, at the moment, between our special educators and who we have assigned to certain buildings, we will be compliant if anything more happens. Um, yep. Like right now, we're starting to get an uptick in new student registrations. Um, I received several emails today. Um, that's where we're going to um, need some new hires. Okay, good. Thank you. One of the things I've talked to uh, the team about, including Annette, is, is to ensure that we are compliant, Ethan, um, is looking at we do have a great deal of interventionists. Um, and there's nothing to say that our interventionists can't service students who get supports via IEPs. So that's, that would be our next avenue to look at is that our highly trained yeah. reading interventionists and math interventionists move into doing more intensive supports for the time being. 
um, which means we will de decrease some of our targeted capacity, but um, we would triage that way. Um, now the hope is we can still, you know, I, I've said to administrators, we're in a great location for folks still to move in. Mm -hmm. um, an example of that is that uh, Newton, Aaron, just got a great candidate for your second grade position um, that will be coming to you tomorrow. And her uh, partner, I don't think she might be saying this, was a law student. Um, and so I think that we still may have an influx of some folks moving into this area based on those types of scenarios. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I would say we are in better shape than some of my colleagues. Um, and I do think our geographical location helps us with that. Uh, this special ed, it's a crisis. I know the secretary is not saying it, but he should because uh, we got to do something to look at incentivizing special educators into the state because there is a severe um, capacity issue, um, which is worrisome. Any other questions on that? Um, we are at other, um, Mar Marcy? Yes. Which, what did you have to, to say? Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't um, chime in during public comments. It actually fell before the policy committee. Um, I just wanted to ask what kind of public comment opportunity there would be on the Thursday meeting. That was my first question. Before and after. Just after. We said that we were going to have a discussion and then allow for comment after. So the, the board is, is going to have a discussion um, and then we'll have room for public comment after our discussion. And my second question is who is synthesizing the comments from, from the last public comment? session back on Wednesday. Is that happening? I, I know there was mention of, of sort of some anecdotal data earlier in this meeting, but uh, it would be good to sort of have some bullet points and I'd be happy to do that in terms of suggestions that were made. I believe that Marcy. Lisa Floyd took a bunch of notes, notes yeah. and we plan on doing some of that work. Go ahead, Stacey. I think, Marcy, after we, um, the policy committee votes to approve the minutes from the previous meeting at every meeting. So that's when those become public. Uh, no, I, I, I wasn't really asking when, when they become public, but I, I was just wondering, you know, who, who was sort of listening to the recording? Because I, I re-listened to the, the full two hours, you know, taking into account, you know, what people were really looking at with respect to the policy. And I just wondered whose responsibility on the policy committee is that? I mean, my answer would be Marcy, I think that we had at least two or three board members who took really uh, concise notes. I know Lisa Floyd said she had over six pages and I fully expect them to share those and, and to help facilitate that conversation with the policy committee on Thursday. I asked the policy committee um, if they wanted me to work on providing any additional thoughts uh, based on what we heard and they wanted to have a discussion first. So I think they're going to take their notes and discuss it on Thursday and then give some direction. Excellent. And and would there be the opportunity for, for me to sort of provide some, some synthesized you know, sort of comments from from what people had said. This is these are this is the direction of of what folks were talking about, and uh, and some possible suggestions for the policy. Would would the board be open to that? I think we're open to. Um, you can provide it with us. I don't know how far we'll get with it that night, but we're always open. And if you want to provide it and send it to us before the meeting, that's also fine. And we can take a look over it. Super, I'd, ha I'd be happy to do that. And, and I'll provide hard copies for anyone who will be there. All right, great. Thank you. Don? Yeah, uh, Jamie 
did you have an opportunity to talk to Keenan to see if there's going to be space and things at the school and Sharon? I did. Thanks for asking that, John. Uh, I did talk to him. We were thinking the gym is actually going to be probably the best location okay. if we're going to have a large turnout. So that's what All we're right. thinking. Thank you. All right. Um, next meeting date is Monday, September 27th at 6 p.m. The full board, where will that be located, Bethel? Uh, Bethel is what we said, yep. Okay, so September 27th will be in Bethel for a full board meeting. And if there is no other business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kathy. Good night. Thank oh, you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.